Hey, Mr. Guitar Player. There he is running. There you come. I decided to, uh, to uh, pump up the, the beauty scale of what you see here singing. Uh, my wife's here to help, help a little bit <laughs> this week on, and on the tambourine too and whatever else we can get her to play. It's good to be with you this morning and worship. Let's stand together. I hope this one gets your toe tapping a little bit. It's okay to dance in this church. We won't tell anybody. Um, let's go. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you worry evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder From your passion and pride, there's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's side. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood. Excellent. You may be seated. Now that got the blood pumping this morning. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, John. And, and Don, good to have you with us today as well. It's great to have all of you here uh, in worship with us this morning. I'm Pastor James. Hope you're all doing well. We want to welcome also those who are joining us on Facebook Live. Uh, if you are a guest, we'd invite you to fill out one of these uh, guest information cards. They're located on the information table there and out in the foyer. Just fill that out as best you can, put it in the drop box at the conclusion of the service today so we can uh, connect with you and uh, let you know how uh, uh, 
welcome you are in our congregation today. And if you're joining us online, it's westoakwoods.com slash connect. If you're a guest worshiping with us online, fill that form out that's there so we can connect with you as well. Well, I think this is the first Sunday out of four that it's not pouring down rain. Uh, and it may be below 90 degrees today. So I'm just, uh, we've got plenty to be rejoicing about. And uh, it's good to see all of you today. Let's uh, have a word of prayer as we continue to welcome God's presence here among us as we have gathered in his name and as we worship him today. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for who you are and for your, as we've just sang about, your wonder-working power. Because it's only by your grace that we are saved. It's only by your stripes that we are healed. And so we come here this morning to celebrate what you have done and what you are doing in our lives. We come here also to seek comfort and encouragement and grace if we are discouraged today. And we come to pray for each other and for our community and to lift up your name as a beacon of light to the city of Austin. Help us today, Lord, as we worship in the song, through prayer, through scripture reading, through the message today. Equip us and help us and focus us on exactly what we need to be doing to spread the word of the gospel. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. John. And let's stand together and sing with joy this song, this hymn of praise. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. One, two, three, four. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory. Psalms 34, 1 through 8. I will bless the Lord at all times. 
His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me. He delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him, and their faces were radiant, and they were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around all those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, what beautiful words from uh, David. If we can um, just strive to do that ourselves and help us to talk with of you, uh, spread your word, and our faces be ready because of you. We ask that you um, bless Pastor James as he comes this morning and all the people that are here. It's so great to see the love and outpouring of our church family. We uh, thank you for the band and everything. We just love you, Lord. Amen. <laughs>
sang this song for the first time as a congregation on Easter Sunday. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood. we are thankful 
this morning for the blood of Christ. It provides a path to salvation, to freedom, God. May we never take it for granted. May we never lose the wonder of your power. And may each and every day that we awake, God, may we be reminded um, that it is through you only that um, there is uh, hope in this world. God, bring us that everlasting hope each and every day. We pray in your name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, John. You may be seated. <clears throat> well, I find uh, tremendous encouragement from God's Word, from the book, of, especially from the book of 1 John. And uh, every Sunday morning uh, in these uh, summer Sundays, uh, we are going to, uh, between now and about the last of August, we're going to um, explore the book of 1 John, and we're going to find some equipping there to become uh, what, our, what we're calling torch bearers this summer. You might have noticed that on some of our themes and some of our uh, 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 literature, some of our handouts that we've uh, been passing out. In fact, tonight we have the first of our summer VBS Sundays called Torch Bears. It's about how to share the gospel. And uh, so the uh, sermon series that we're going to be going through this summer in the book of First John is going to be talking about how to share the gospel, how to be equipped to become a greater, more effective torch bearer. So the title of the sermon this morning is called See, Hear, and Proclaim. And I'd invite you to join me in reading in God's Word in 1 John chapter 1. We're going to read just the whole first chapter, verses 1 through 10. 1 John chapter 1, 1 through 10. John writes, What was from the beginning? What we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes. What we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. And the life was manifested and we have seen and testify and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. What we have seen and heard we proclaim to you also so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. These things we write so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and announced to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Would you pray with me? All right, God, we come to your word now and we ask for your kingdom to come and for your will to be done right here in this place now as it is in heaven. Fill us, Lord, and encourage us. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. This sermon today is obviously for everybody who's in this room and, and watching, of course, on Facebook. But, little disclaimer, I want to speak today especially to those of you who might be experiencing a time of discouragement, maybe even a time of depression or a time of anxiety. We all struggle with series or seasons of discouragement. I know I myself do. 
In fact, some of the greatest leaders in history have experienced these times of doubt and discouragement. Winston Churchill called it the dog of depression. It was like a a bulldog that just chased him around everywhere he went. The great preacher Charles Haddon Spurgeon, he called it a crow that swooped in on him. Do you have some dogs and crows that chase after you every now and then? Sometimes it seems like there are more holes in our boat than we have the energy to patch up. And so if you're there, or if you want to encourage somebody who's going through a season like this, I want to give you a word from 1 John. And those of you who are experiencing a a time maybe of things are going smoothly, you're rejoicing, we rejoice with you in that, but you can lean into this word as well. And the word is this. God is not toying around with you. He's not playing games. In fact, God has gone on the record about this. Do you remember when he sweat drops of blood in Gethsemane? He's been there. Do you remember when he wept bitterly at the tomb, the grave of one of his best friends? Jesus knows exactly what it's like to have the dog of discouragement chase him and the crow of anxiety swoop down on him. And when those deep waters come, the world says, turn around, don't drown, right? Have you heard that before? Escape, get away. Jesus' word is this, I'll carry you through. I will be with you. I want to have fellowship with you. Now you may say, well, pastor, what in the world does this have to do with 1 John chapter 1? Glad you asked. Let me tell you. What John is talking about in hearing and seeing and proclaiming is the same thing that we need to be hearing and seeing and proclaiming today And that is, God's grace is aggressive. John here is talking about the aggressive grace of God. See, God's grace is like LeBron James going to the hoop. It's like Babe Ruth swinging a bat. It's like Emmett Smith running. You remember some, some of the old cowboy fans remember that? The good old days. That grace comes for you. Grace is the unearned love and forgiveness of God. It's a security that chases you down. It's the grace that goes after the discouraged. And once received, it transforms you from the inside out. In other words, God's grace and fellowship with him, it is sufficient to meet the times of discouragement you're going. God's grace will heal broken homes and broken health and broken jobs and broken minds. God's grace is sufficient. I've seen it. I've heard it. I proclaim it. No matter how far you fall, the arms of God's grace can get under you. Have you seen it? Have you heard it? Do you proclaim it? It's the aggressive grace of God. I heard a story this week about a, uh, it comes from a, a 
Christian woman. I'm not really sure what her name is. It was just a, written down in a book that a, a preacher had written. True story. She was in a hospital room with a very ill spouse. Her husband was very sick. And the doctor came into this room and gave them some very grave news. Not good. And she said she, she held her emotions together when she was in this room, but then she just had to get out. Some of you have probably been in this kind of situation. Just had to get out. So she went to the elevator, opened up the elevator, went in. This was about 1 or 2 in the morning. It was late at night. And she didn't know where to go. So what she did is that she would just continually, there was nobody getting on the elevator except her, so she just pressed the top floor button. She'd go all the way up, then press the, the bottom floor button, go all the way down. She just rode this elevator up and down. Up. And in the elevator, she just lost. Well, lo and behold, she went up to the very top floor one on one of these go-arounds and was just sobbing. And the door opened, and there was a man who was there, kind of an elderly man, a seasoned man. And he came in. Thank, yeah, thank you. Uh, he came in. And he didn't say a word, didn't say anything. But he just reached in his pocket, and he pulled out a, he pulled out a handkerchief and gave it to the woman. and for numerous trips up and down this elevator. He just sat there with her while she sobbed and he helped to dry her tears when she was done crying. Not a word said. He just exited. That's grace. That's grace. It's aggressive grace. It's, it's the grace that because we've been saved by the blood of Christ, when the elevator door opens, we're ready to give our handkerchief to a sobbing neighbor. We see it. We hear it. We proclaim it. Grace. Now, let me get on the application side of that with this text. There are three practical results that happen when you see, hear, and proclaim the grace of God. When you experience that fellowship with God and extend that to your neighbor, three things result from that. Number one, the grace of God will clarify your calling. John experienced this grace, and he told these folks, what we have seen heard, we testify and proclaim to you also so that we may have fellowship among us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. You see what John's doing here? His real-time, real-world experience with the grace, the saving power of God has enhanced his calling. And his calling and the calling of his congregation was to increase what's called fellowship. The spiritual bond that we have with one another because of the grace of God. See, when we experience the grace of Christ, the calling becomes clearer. The calling becomes clearer on which elevators we ride, on who we're ministering to in who we extend fellowship to. In fact, let me ask you this. What is your definition of fellowship? Is it broader than getting together and drinking a cup of coffee on Sunday morning? That's good fellowship though, right? We like that. Y'all like it more than the first song most Sundays. You're like, oh, the worship search started. We better get in there. That's a part of fellowship. 
The fellowship that John is talking about here is, is it's more than a meal. It's more than seeing each other once a week. It's reconciled relationships in Christ. That's fellowship. So because of God's grace, our call is not to be a church that's just a social organization. Too many churches are social organizations. They just, we get together and we talk a little bit, the latest gossip and a little Jesus thrown in. That ain't fellowship. Too many churches are are geared to be thrill-seeking churches. We sell cheap thrills with the little Jesus. Here's a little song and dance from the preacher to make you feel good. That ain't fellowship. Fellowship happens when we who have experienced the grace of God run to each other not only to reconcile in our relationships, but to encourage each other to go into the world. Every open elevator door, we walk in, minister to the sobbing, and say, here is what fellowship really looks like. It's not what the world is selling. Here's Christ. The grace of God clarifies your calling. Number two, the grace of God steadies your walk. It steadies your walk. It gives you confidence in what you are doing and how you make disciples. See, there were people in John's day, much like in ours, whose walk did not look much like Jesus, even though they claimed to be believers. Surely that doesn't happen today. But there were some who would say, oh, I've got fellowship with God. I love fellowship. And then they walked around like they were staggering in the dark. There were also some who would say things like, I've gotten to a point where I don't sin anymore. Who of you have reached that status? It ain't me. I don't sin anymore because I've reached godlike status. But the proof is in the pudding, isn't it? Those who say that they are Christians, but they just go around doing whatever they want to do without a conscience need to re-examine deep down their relationship with God and their soul. Those who think they have risen above sin and have reached the final level of the final destination, they need to come down a few notches. In fact, let me ask you this. Let's say you got acquainted with someone who is a serial thief, robber. And you invited them over to your house. And you said, let me give you a tour. Here are all my locks on the doors and how you open them. Here's where we keep the key. Here's the combination to the safe. Here's where you can find my guns. What is going to happen, most likely, the next time you leave your house? You come back and find all your stuff gone, and you say, how in the world did that happen? I can't imagine who would have robbed my house. I thought I had it all figured out. There are consequences to our relationship with each other and God. However, if we confess our sin, if we come off our high horse, if we 
say, God, I've been walking with you for a long time, but I need some help. I need grace. I need forgiveness. I need to get right in relationship with you and with my neighbor. I need that fellowship. I need that encouragement. What has God promised to do? Forgive. And not only does God forgive one sin, what does John say? He forgives all of it. Every single one of them. Are you coming to Christ? for clarification of your calling? Are you coming to Christ for a steady of your walk? If we walk in the light, doesn't mean you have to be perfect. It means you are given over to the aggressive grace of God. If we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, then have that strong bond of fellowship. And we will see and we will hear and we will proclaim the greatness of God. If you really want to work on your evangelism, friends, confess your sin. If you really want to work on your evangelism, All the classes help. Reading books on evangelism help. All those resources, those are good things. But at the end of the day, evangelism is all about embracing the grace of God. And as we have seen it and hear it and touch it, we proclaim it and say, here is what it is. I extend the same thing to you. In fact, there uh, is a pastor that I know, and you may, some of you in the room may know of him. His name is Logan Cummings. Have some of you all heard of him? For those of you who may be new, new word to our church, he was the founding pastor of our congregation. I got to talk to him on the phone a few weeks back, and we had a really good conversation. And we were talking about evangelism. And I figured out he was uh, from West Texas, and I'm a West Texan too, so we kind of speak the same language sometimes. It's a different kind of vernacular once you get kind of west of the hill country. Um, but we were talking about evangelism one time, and, and he, he put it like this. He said evangelism is much, much more about you having a conversation across your fence with somebody because they're thirsty and you can tell them where they can find water. Now, that's a West Texanism because there's a lot of drought out there and we're looking for water all the time. Where can I find it? And if your neighbor finds it, you don't hoard it. (laughs) I can find it. I've found it. I've seen it. I've heard it. I've gotten my hands in it. I know what the grace of God is all about. He has saved me. He's knocked me down from my high horse. Am I perfect? No, but I've got a Savior who is, and he saved me by his grace, and he's given me that living water, and I'm never getting thirsty again. Let me show you where it is. Come with me. Come with me. That's evangelism. That's evangelism. It will clarify what you need to do. It'll steady your feet. And then lastly, the grace of God verifies your salvation. The grace of God verifies your salvation. You know, some Christians question at times the validity of whether or not they're saved. I've even known some people who have been believers for twice as long as I have. And they've been in my office and said, Pastor, I don't know sometimes for sure. 
Now, more, more times than not, we question our salvation because of trials, certain trials we're going through, or we have a bad feeling about something, or it's an emotion, or uh, we have some regrets that we just can't seem to deal with. But I want to tell you something here based on 1 John 1. The ones who truly need to question their salvation are those who say, you know what, I don't sin anymore. I got it all figured out. I get this. I really don't have a need for any of this religious Christianity stuff anymore. If we say that we haven't sinned, and John says we're making God out to be a liar. So here's the deal. No matter the trials we go through, the feelings that we have, good or bad, the regrets in our life, if you have been forgiven by Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. That's the beauty of the gospel. We are not a people defined by our trials and emotions and regrets. We are a people who are saved by grace through faith. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Grace goes deeper down in our lives no matter what. Grace verifies your salvation. In other words, when you come to Christ and to each other and say, you know what? I've gone through some things. I've dealt with all sorts of emotions. I've done things, even as a believer, that I really regret. I still have some things that God's working on in my heart, but I tell you what, his grace is sufficient for me. He saved me. You better believe it, you're saved. <laughs> You better believe it. In fact, I invite you to reflect deeply on what God is convicting you about and telling you concerning his grace today. Is he clarifying through his grace what you are supposed to be saying and sharing and with whom you need to go today and say, you know what, I don't have it all figured out. Do I st still mess up on occasion? You betcha. Let me tell you where to find the water. Who is it you need to go to? And literally talk across the fence to him today. Who among us need our walk to be steadied? I mentioned at the, at the first part of the service today about discouragement. That dog is following you. That crow is, is going down on you. Think about the grace of God. In fact, I told our Wednesday night audience a few weeks ago this very thing that has meant the world to me recently. Charles Haddon Spurgeon had a remedy when it comes to negative thoughts, depressing thoughts said, whenever one of those thoughts comes into your head, add the phrase, but Jesus, B-U-T, Jesus, but Jesus. In other words, I really messed up today, but Jesus. I feel horrible today. I'm having a horrible day, but Jesus. I don't know when I'm going to get out of this trial, but Jesus, his grace has tracked me down. I've received that grace. It's living water to my soul. And it's because of Jesus that I don't have to live in total discouragement. It steadies my steps. It's clarified my calling. And now 
I'm going to go to my neighbor and tell him where the water is. I invite you to do that today. Would you pray with me? God, we thank you so much for your calling in 1 John 1 to reflect on your grace, to reflect on what it means to be truly saved, that it's not about achieving some sort of status, but it's about admitting who we are and who you are. And that because of your grace, we can have fellowship and reconciled relationships with one another and with you, and we can go into this world of brokenness and and, uh, 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 discouragement, depression, and say, let me tell you where to find that fellowship. I've seen it. I've heard it. I've experienced it. I know what it's like. Come follow me, and we'll journey with Jesus together. Lord, we come together before you as a people today to say, because you are in the light, We want to walk in the light. Clarify our calling, guide our steps. Help us today, Lord Jesus, we pray in your name. Amen. We come now to a a time of decision and invitation. I'm going to be here at the front. And if you have a decision to make to join our church, or if you need prayer, say, I I need Jesus in my life. I want to be saved. I want to know what this is like to, to, to have grace, God's unmerited forgiveness, something I don't work for, covering my life, forgiving me of all my sin. This is a great time to take care of that. I'm going to be down here at the front. We're going to stand. We're going to sing in just a moment. And this is a time for you to publicly say, this is what I want for my life. This is what Jesus is calling me to do. You can just slip out. Take your friend with you. Come up here with me in the front. And I'll be glad to greet you and pray with you and talk about your decision. Would you stand and let's sing together and respond as God leads.
Thank you, Ben. Y'all may be seated. Uh, just a few announcements before we're dismissed today. First of all, uh, this evening, starting at 5 o'clock, we have our first Torchbearers uh, children's event. It's, kind of, it's our mini VBS. We're doing VBS one night a month throughout the summer. It'll be from 5 to 8 tonight. And a couple of words about that. First of all, if you're one of our leaders, one of our volunteers, uh, Jamie is out sick today. So uh, yours truly uh, wants to meet with you to give you some instructions uh, after the service is concluded. So I'll be down here down the front. I've got a few handouts for you and I uh, want to encourage you about some specific things uh, that will be going on tonight. And also, one thing that uh, all of you could have a hand in, um, I have been asked to uh, get the word out that this area back here where we have our fellowships, our eating, where John is, waving his hand at you, uh, we need to move a few of these rows out of the way and move some tables in for our kids to eat at tonight. We're going to have a little snack supper for them uh, starting at 5 o'clock, and uh, we need some tables set up. We're expecting around 20, 20, 25 children, and then, of course, our adults as well. So we need to clear out some space so that we can all eat our chicken nuggets together. We're looking forward to that. Right, Suzanne? That's going to be good. All right. So we're looking forward to that. So uh, that's coming up tonight. And uh, those of you who uh, still haven't registered for that, go to westoakwoods.com slash torch. And you can fill out the registration there. It's kind of easy to remember. Okay. Also, uh, from our missions committee, we still need volunteers to go to True Care uh, to help prepare gifts for new moms. Meet at the church at 9.45 a.m. on what day, Mandy? Tomorrow. Okay, to meet at the church tomorrow at 9.45 in the morning, and we'll go together. And Mandy's right down there, so tell her if you can go uh, down to True Care in the morning to deliver those gifts. That'll be fantastic. All right. Um, also, we have a newsletter that we publish on uh, email and send that out every Wednesday. If you're interested in being on that, please contact the church office and we'll get you on the mailing list for uh, all the news that that's uh, fit and unfit to print. We'll get it to you. All right. Let's stand and we'll have a, a, a time of prayer and be dismissed together. Lord, thank you for uh, this beautiful day. Thank you for our worship this morning and the reminders that we've had about your grace, about your forgiveness, about what you've done for us on the cross, about your blood shed for us, our redemption. And now, Lord, help us to go out among our neighbors, minister. And when we find those who are distraught, discouraged, overwhelmed, we can share where to find the living water. I pray that we do that today in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Uh, Sunday night workers, I'll meet you down here. And then we need table movers as well.